This video shows you how to solve for a fluid flow around a corner, and that fluid flow is for a 2D fluid, 2D region, in which the fluid is incompressible, irrotational, and inviscid. So the task, I have a region that looks a bit like this, and I want to know fluid flow like this. So, in brief, solve that under the conditions that the fluid is incompressible, inviscid, and irrotational. If you have not, at this point, already watched the video on the stream function, please stop and do that now because otherwise this video won't make any sense at all. Because in order to find fluid flow using complex analysis, you need the stream function. Okay, so as a warm-up, we're going to look at fluid flow and the upper half plane. This is the real part of Z. This is the imaginary part of Z. This is a wall. And we've got fluid flowing. Oops, we've got fluid flowing along here. Okay, now in order to do this, you look at this fluid flow and say, well gosh. Um, I'm looking for a function in which I have the stream function whose fluid, whose level curves are parallel to the wall. That's what we're after. We're after the stream function whose level curves are parallel to the wall. And what does that look like? Well, essentially, oops, the stream function as a function of x and y. Well, if I want the level curves parallel to the wall, the stream function is real valued. It should be some real constant a times y. because that way my level curves are parallel to the wall. Is this a solution to Laplace's equation, i.e., is this a harmonic function? Yes, because if I take two derivatives of either x or y, I get zero. So it's trivially harmonic. If I look at what function would give me the complex potential with this as the imaginary part, complex function f of z has phi of xy equals ay as its imaginary part. Well, that, that looks pretty easy because it's got the y in the imaginary part. The y feels already naturally like an imaginary part of a complex number. The answer is easy to come by. Just f of z is equal to a times z. Again, this a is real. Because, of course, this would be ax plus iay, just as we wanted. OK, in that case, notice this guy here. This is the phi, the velocity potential. And 
If you recall from the other video, I can recover the velocity field as either the gradient of A, notice that's just all pointing, it has no change in the y component, no y derivative rather, uh, so it's all moving in the horizontal field direction, although you could think of it also using this formula for the complex potential. So if I take a derivative, it's just the complex conjugate of A. Now A is strictly real, so this is just A. Put another way, this is A plus I times zero. Now thinking of this in terms of a velocity vector, this says no vertical component. of velocity. And some horizontal component. OK. And indeed, hey, that's exactly what I've drawn with those blue arrows. No vertical component in each of the vectors tangent and some horizontal component. Of course, if A is positive, I get fluid moving to the right as I've drawn it. If A is negative, it goes the other way. So the sine of A determines flow direction. OK, cool. So I have this analytic function. F that describes how everything is working in terms of the fluid flow. Great. But that, that was just the warm-up. I'm really interested in this corner. What do I get from the corner to the, fl to the, from the, corner to the uh, straight line? Well, clearly some kind of conformal mapping ought to do the job. And in fact, essentially what I want to do is I want to grab this origin match them up, and make it so that the vertical axis here, the vertical axis here, matches up with this negative real axis here. OK. So let's do it. To return to flow around corner need conformal map taking us from our corner to our upper half plane. I'm going to name my upper half plane coordinates W. And I'm going to mark things up color-coded so you can see where they're supposed to go. So gray for this boundary is going to be over here. And cyan for this boundary is going to be over here. So what analytic function, I'll call it G, implements this kind of transformation. Well, the thing to notice is that essentially you've got a 90 degree bend going on here. Um, in particular, going this direction, if I take W and square it, uh, or rather, hold on, if I uh, if I take a z rather than square it, so this is g of z equals z squared, uh, you will notice that if I take a, an i right here, i squared is negative 1. On the other hand, if I take a 1, that well, 1 doesn't go anywhere. So this conformal mapping given by uh, g of z is equal to z squared. It's conformal everywhere except at the origin. At the origin, it's not conformal. That will transform a harmonic function 
over in the w land, so a harmonic function over here, gets turned into a harmonic function over here. So since w equals g of z equals z squared is analytic and g prime of z is not equal to zero for all z not equal to zero function describes a conformal map from the first quadrant to the upper half plane. Great. So we've got our conformal map in hand. We already know the, the flow solution on the W side of things. So since F of W, our complex potential, an analytic function, so is F of G of Z. This is the complex potential for the flow in the first quadrant. Now what is that? Well, G of Z, this is F of Z squared, G of Z is Z squared, and F of Z is just a times z, a being a real number. Okay, expanding that out. Expanding that out is not difficult at all. And so this guy here is the stream function. And this guy here, oops, and I lost an A, this guy here is my velocity potential. And you'll no notice uh, the velocity potential, it's, a, it's level curves are hyperbolas, as are the stream function. Uh, the stream function, of course, is tangent to the flow line, uh, tangent to the velocity field, so it gives you the nice flow lines. So it's actually pretty nice to plot that. So the, these are the level curves so the level curves of the stream function. So depending on the sign of A, the fluid will either flow to the left or to the right. So for instance, if it's flowing to the right for positive A, you'll get fluid flow moving like that. And that stands to reason. The fluid is, is taking a turn. And as you get closer and closer to the corner, uh, they bunch up and have sharper bends in them. So this allows you to recover the fluid flow pretty easily provided you can relate that fluid flow back to some region that you can find in a simpler way. And so whenever you want to find the fluid flow in a planar region, and that fluid is incompressible, inviscid, and irrotational, then complex analysis can help you find that.
You just need to find an appropriate conformal mapping and find some way to cook up a harmonic stream function, a function whose level curves are parallel to or tangent to the boundary. It's a solution to the Dirichlet problem for Laplace's equation, and there's a number of good ways to cook those up.